Aunt Janet's Kitchen. Today I'm going to show you my recipe for Italian spaghetti sauce, beefy spaghetti sauce, at the request of my sister-in-law Joyce who wanted me to share this recipe. The original recipe comes from a Weight Watchers recipe, but um, I've tweaked it quite a bit, changed the seasonings, added some sausage, which Weight Watchers wouldn't like, but really makes the spaghetti good. Uh, so we're going to start I would just like to show you how I've laid out the counter, which typically I don't do, but since we're going to film this, I would just like to give you an overview of the ingredients. All right, here are uh, some of the produce that's going in. We have mushrooms, a nice green pepper, and a couple of cooking onions. I will be spraying my crock pot with a little bit of the pan, because it does have a bit of a problem right here on the corner it sticks sometimes, so I just kind of do that to see if it helps. I don't know if it does or not. Okay, and then here I have my little chopper. I'm going to hand chop the mushrooms, but use the chopper for the uh, onions and the peppers. Uh, my spices are gathered here, and at this point we have the tomato sauce and such that I'm going to be using. I use crushed tomatoes, diced tomatoes, and tomato paste. A little bit of brown sugar, and it was in the original recipe. And over here we have the meats that we're putting in, which include ground meat from the butcher. I do recommend finding a good butcher and getting your ground meat ground fresh. And it makes all the difference. And also the uh, butcher shop sausage, which is very flavorful, so I add that. So let me begin by getting my apron on. I've ruined umpteen shirts and t-shirts, so I've now resorted to an apron. I feel like an old lady, but uh, we're ready to start. Okay, I'm going to begin by putting about a tablespoonful of olive oil in the fry pan, turn it on to medium high, and let it get nice and hot. All right. Um, the recipe does call for just adding the fresh ingredients right into the crock pot, but I like to saute the onions and the garlic. I think it makes it a tastier product. So while we're waiting for that pan to heat up, let's wash the mushrooms. I know cooking shows say you shouldn't put mushrooms in water, but I do, all right? They're only going to get a, a quick bath, a quick jouncing, get the little bit of debris off of them, and then uh, dry them real quick. Then they won't be lose whatever flavor, I guess, that the experts say they might lose. But at any rate, I just simply use white mushrooms. Jounce them a couple times. Okay. And then I'll set them out on paper towels to, to dry. All right, that looks pretty good. And there's really no residue of the planting medium that these mushrooms grow in. So we'll just strain them out of the prep pan and spread them, spread them on the paper towel. And there they can sit and dry for a few minutes while I begin the process of prepping the pepper. All right, using a cutting board. Give it a good rinse, and I cut the top off in that manner. I actually can use that, and then I go through and cut these membranes. Can you see that? Cutting the membranes on the side that attach the seeds into the inside of the pepper, simply pulling it out. Okay, I give the inside a little bit of a rinse to take out any residual seeds. And um, because in the spaghetti sauce, I don't like the pieces to be too chunky, I will slice these in the um, food processor, which uh, kind of disguises the peppers, I think, a little in the sauce. And for people who claim they don't like peppers, they never even know they're there. Um, so let me set this to the side. And I can now commence to add the ground meat to the frying pan. All right. 
the pan is plenty hot enough, I'm afraid I'm going to get a bit of a splatter, I'm going to turn it down and um, pull it off to the side a second. I'm using electric, so I do have less direct control of the heat with the electric stove. I'm going to add the hamburger first, breaking it as I add it into the pan. And of course, as it browns, I'll continue to move around and break it down as well. But just to get it started browning, and we'll Okay, well, nope. that was about a pound and a quarter to a pound, and, more like a pound and a half of, of hamburger. So just start to let it brown, and this is a half pound of the sausage. Now, some people may like to cut the sausage into pieces, but I think the flavor in the sauce blends. If I remove, oops, excuse me, I'm not going to throw that one in. If I remove the sausage from the casing, all right? and then work it in with the hamburger. And the sausage will stay more solid than the hamburger is, so try to break it up quite a bit as you put it in the pan. And there's a lot of flavor in this sausage, so it does add a lot to the spaghetti. I have made the spaghetti with just hamburger for many years, and it was fine. And um, I'm going to try and lighten it up and make it with ground turkey, so we'll see how that is. But right now, I want to replicate the recipe we used this Christmas because that's the one that Joyce wanted to see. All right, so, and I'm also, if those of you have looked at my Christmas opening my pots and pans video, I'm using my all clad emerald. Okay, well, now that I've got my hands all ooky, I'm going to give them a good wash. And um, let that browning start or continue. Okay. Simple job with the onions. As I said, I'm saving myself a little bit of work by using the food processor. And also, um, the onions are less obvious in the sauce. So, I mean, that's two reasons why I like it. If the sauce is too chunky, I observe various family members picking chunks out, and this way a lot more goes down when they're picking less out. So we'll use the food processor. Okay. Now, um, I'm just using regular cooking onions, but I switch it out. You know, so if there's nice uh, Vidalia onions and I'm using a little sweeter onion, if I have the big Spanish onions, I use those. A lot of flexibility in this recipe. Um, it tolerates a lot of flexibility. So we're just going to get those into chunky quarters and drop them in my mini food processor. All right, I'm not using my Ninja. The um, evaluation wait not quite finished on that, but I think the mini processor will do just fine. All right, so let's get one of those onions in there. The recipe calls for a cup and a half, and... Um, I believe two onions will do that. Let me get that in there. And pulp. I just kind of want a fine rind. Um, looks like it's set there. Keep going. Yep, we're doing good. Okay. That looks like how I want it, so let me check on the meat. Oh, that's browning nicely. Now you'll see. Um, I don't know, can you zero in on the pot here? I'm continuing to turn it and or chop it as I mix it to try and get the browning, all the meat brown, and break up those pieces, pieces of sausage, which tend to be bigger, so or tend to stay together a little better than the hamburger. So it's moving along pretty well. I have the heat up to a medium high on my electric, and actually it looks like it's slowed down a little, so... Um, let it get back up to heat, and if it needs to add a little more. Now, when I remove this meat, I will be draining it. All right, I'm going to take these mushrooms out and uh, set them in a small prep bowl. If you use a full-size processor, obviously, you'll be able to do it all in one batch. But I like the little one. It seems to do a nice job. And um, 
seems easier on the cleanup. So we'll just do the second batch of onions and um, get those ready. Because as I said, I am going to saute the onions and the garlic prior to putting it in the crock pot. Yep. In goes the second batch of onions. These are strong onions. Boy, they aren't the sweet Vidalia's. I can feel I'm ready to start. It's in my eyes. Oops, that's not on right. Okay, that looks pretty good. A little coarse, but it's nice and fine. Of course, if you like a chunky look to your spaghetti sauce, feel free to make a finer grind. But a if you coarser. Would, a coarser grind, yeah. If you would like to see what this looks like, I'll grab a spoon and just show you. Okay, that's about how it looks. Look at that. It's pretty fine. It's pretty fine. All right, we'll put that in there so it can get into the pot when I'm ready to brown that. Now, as you can see, you're doing more than one thing when you're fixing this sauce. So let's go back and check on the meat. Oh, it's really, really steaming up again, or browning. Uh, cooking through nicely. There's a lot of liquid in there, and uh, I will be draining that out. Looking pretty good. All right. Meat's about done. Now what I need to do is get my tomato products in the pot. Uh, I like to get that, whoops, I guess i got to open it. No, it is open. I like to get large can of crushed tomatoes. tomatoes. In this case, I actually picked up cans that have basil and oregano in it. No problem. You can use the plain. You can use the seasoned. It's not that heavily seasoned, so it's really not going to throw off your recipe. I like to get this part in the crock pot before I add the meat. And then I'll turn my crock pot on low and it'll slowly start to warm up as we add the ingredients. Alright, so much for this handy dandy, this isn't lifting my, I guess I didn't get it open right. There we go. That's one can. Now, in the summertime, I've used um, fresh diced tomatoes on this product, on, on this spaghetti sauce, and that's worked out. It's tended to be a little waterier, water or a little more watery, but um, it comes out nicely. Okay, give that a stir. Now, add the tomato paste. All right. Two cans of the six ounce tomato paste, and... They're always a little harder to get out of the can, at least with this kind of can opener. The other kind you can open up the bottoms and the tops and just um, force all this tomato paste down. So now with this kind you have to dig it out. It is thick. Okay. calls for a little water. And at this point, I use the water to help me out with the tomato paste, because it's so hard to get the tomato paste out of the cans, that I start with a few tablespoons of water in that tomato paste and just start stirring it around to work on some of the paste stuck in the can. I just, you know, seem like a shame to waste all that. So, you get that out of one can. I go light on the water. The recipe calls for three quarters of a cup. I don't really use all of it. I use about a half a cup. 
Um, if you feel as you're cooking, it looks like the sauce is drier than you would want, and I don't think it will be, you certainly can add the extra water. Okay. Now I can hear behind me that the meat is really starting to dry out and brown, and I don't want to get it too brown, so I'm going to pull it off the heat. It's cooked, but it's not um, crispy brown. Eh, a couple pieces are. Okay. Now at this point, I take a bowl, putting a strainer over the bowl, and I place my meat in the strainer to drain all that fat out. And here you see the benefit of going to a good butcher. There's very little fat in this meat that has drained off. And remember, I had added some olive oil to the pan, so um, we're pretty good. In fact, I have maybe just enough uh, fat in this pan to saute my onions with and um, not worry about that. So, well, I have a little more meat than I can fit in my strainer, so I'm just going to scoop it up over the high end of the pan, you know, tilting the pan so the extra fat goes down. I don't want my sauce to be greasy. I think that's not very appealing. I am now going to put the pan back on the heat, medium high, let it get hot again, and I'm going to be adding my onions. All right. So the meat's drained rather nicely. Yep, yeah, that's it. Not much fat there. So We'll put all the meat in the sauce. You can see this is going to make a huge amount of sauce till we get done adding all these ingredients. And the good news is this sauce freezes very well. All right. So the pan's starting to sizzle a little. I think we have enough heat for our onions. I'm going to add them. Go down a little on the heat. I do just want them to, you know, they don't want them to get burned. I might need, actually I may even need to add a little bit of oil to that. But maybe not, we'll see. It's, they're starting to soften and that's how I want, I want them to soften. I'll let them go for a minute or so on a lower heat. And I will <clears throat> prepare my garlic. I don't actually have any fancy technique for cutting the garlic. Um, I simply nip off the ends of the paper and then just work them off with my finger. I know some people smash them with knives and I uh, never managed to come up with a good garlic technique. So I just peel it off like that. The recipe calls for two cloves of, gar cloves of garlic. Um, I'm adding three. Uh, I think garlic um, is a wonderful ingredient, and as you can see, there's a lot of sauce there. It seems like two cloves of garlic with all that sauce is a little too skimpy. So, um, usually I just dice the garlic um, by hand. I don't usually put it in the food processor, um, so that'll take a little bit of time, and we won't film that. But also, when I'm in a hurry, I've had plenty of luck using the jarred minced garlic. Um, I think it tends to hold its shape in the sauce, so you always see it when you use it, whereas the fresh garlic kind of breaks apart and, um, you know, it doesn't have that you know, little dicey look. So I'm just doing just a raw chop, a rough chop on this, coming through not really being all that uniform, then I'll come back and just chop it down again, getting it into um, tiny little pieces. And as the onions cook, I don't want to overcook the garlic, so I'm going to add them in the process of cooking the onions, but let the onions get a head start. Now, in actuality, the original recipe did not call for cooking the onions in the garlics, but uh, I think it makes a better... Uh, sauce to do so. So that's my innovation to the recipe. But if you're in a hurry, just throw everything in the pot. The crock pot does work miracles with that slow heat. So 
Oh, we'll do that. All right, get that a little finer. And I think I can add it to my onions now. They're cooking slowly over here, softening up, and we'll get the... Notice, I haven't added any salt at this point. I know when I see a lot of shows on TV, I see the chefs adding the sauce, salt in all the stages. But I stay true to this recipe. I just add the sauce into the final, you know, putting everything into the crock pot. I just add it in at that place. Okay, these the onions are getting golden. You can see how nice they look. We'll let them cook down for another minute or so. And because I used the some of the drippings from that meat, that flavor from the sausage is probably just getting absorbed by the onions. All right, so next step, I want to chop my peppers. I'm simply going to add them into the same bowl, the same chopper. There's a little bit of raw onion in there, but that won't hurt. And then get a nice uh, size chop on it and throw it into the pot. Easy prep. And like I said, sometimes I do them by hand. This is a nice little processor, fairly uniform chop, so um, <laughs> fairly uniform for the one, except for the one it missed completely. All right, so back in it goes, and we'll get a couple more pieces. See, sometimes it's just as easy to chop it by hand, so you know, whatever kind of hand I'm in. processor there's more of a liquid presence of the peppers it just you know infuses better I think when it's cut finer so okay I can smell those onions and that garlic and one more that was a big pepper I used it just you know a real big pepper I've used red peppers too. Oh, I don't have the lid on right. I've used red peppers and they've been fine. Hmm. Huh. wrong here. I've used red peppers, but they are more expensive and a little sweeter, so you know you may prefer them. smell those onions starting to brown so I definitely want them off the pot all right in fact they got a little too dry so what I'm going to do is take a tiny bit of that water that I had not yet used and um, put it in the pot and cook off that onion stuff that's there and add it all right so we're ready to add the last of the peppers said I've had a problem with this scorching before so I don't want it on the high heat. Start to stir the things in and as you can see there's not going to be a lot of room left to all the ingredients get in. Um, now for the seasoning. All right we start with I think this is an interesting touch that you may not necessarily think of going into spaghetti sauce. You start with two tablespoons of brown sugar. I like to use the dark brown sugar. It has a little bit of stronger taste in the color. I simply put my stainless steel tablespoon measure and press with the back of my palm of my hand there to pack it. Because you always want to pack your measurement of brown sugar. So there's one and we'll pick up the other one. The brown sugar, I think, is there to compensate for all the acidity in the tomatoes. So, second one. Okay, we'll 
get that out of the way. Got a little brown sugar on my hands with my technique there. Don't rinse them off. All right, we're getting to the end of the line here. Let me stir off the last of these onions and uh, get those in the pot. We just put the last of the onions in the pot here, in the crock pot. And now it's time to add the seasoning. All right, we're adding basil. It's two teaspoons of basil. All right, one, two, it always seems like so much to me. Two teaspoons of basil. One teaspoon of oregano, just dried oregano. And then one teaspoon of salt. I am using kosher salt. Generous teaspoon there. And we have, I'll use the bay leaf later, uh, some black pepper. This is a half teaspoon of black pepper. And I'm just using the pepper grinder, just kind of kind of estimating what might be a half a teaspoon of black pepper. Okay. Now, this adds a little bit of heat. Some red pepper. Crushed red pepper. Um, I don't like things very spicy. I don't even put a quarter teaspoon in. I take my quarter teaspoon measure and I measure about half of a quarter teaspoon, about an eighth of a teaspoon. And believe me, I can taste it. If it were more than that, I don't think I would enjoy it. All right, now this next ingredient is, I think, the secret of my kitchen the uh, better than bouillon beef base. The rest, original recipe called for. Uh, the beef flavored bouillon, but I love this better than bouillon beef base. So I put a very generous tablespoon in. John, can you pass me the tablespoon over there? Right there next to the brown sugar. Okay. A little of this goes a long way. Oh, well, there's none of this here. All right, so that one's empty. All right, I had to open a new jar. It's the organic. I've never used the organic before. The organic is a lighter brown than the regular, but um, I'm sure it's just as good. So I add at least a tablespoon, sometimes a tablespoon and a half. I think it just brings such rich flavor to the mix. And you can see I'm using my fingers on here, which um, I don't have a, a spatula small enough. So I'm going to wash my fingers, and we'll go to... One of the those last mushrooms steps. I washed at the beginning, I'm now just going to cut them into about thirds or quarters. Just slicing them. I like these to be chunky. And that way people who don't like them can find them and get rid of them. And those of us who like them can enjoy them. So they're going in as my last step. A bigger one like this I would cut into quarters. And um, one like this I might cut in half. So, and of course, um, I've made the sauce without the mushrooms when I know I'm going to be using this in a recipe where the mushrooms don't work or having someone for dinner, you know, company that doesn't like mushrooms. So then you don't need the mushrooms if you don't like them. Kind of find with mushrooms, you either love them or you hate them. So, um, respect that. Now, I just want to do a quick double check through my recipe and make sure that all the ingredients have been added. Give it a final stir and put the lid on. Oh, I can. Ju I just realized all the ingredients haven't been added. I don't have to check yet. All right. Um, the recipe does not call for parsley. I will add the parsley about three hours into cooking and I'll add fresh or frozen parsley. I have parsley from the garden that I've cleaned and frozen, and I just add it in, in about three hours into the cooking. And after I get everything stirred into place here, it looks a little dry. If you uh, will take a shot of it, you can see everything in there. It looks a little dry, but you'll see as the things cook down, it will get saucier. All right. It might look a little dry or a little thick, but as it cooks, you're going to, as with most crock pot cooking, you're going to see the liquid uh, come out. And my last ingredient, before I put the lid on here, is two bay leaves. It wasn't in the original recipe, but I think it enhances the uh, flavor of the sauce quite a bit. 
And um, then a little later, like three hours into the cooking, I add the parsley. So just a quick check with the recipe. I'll get it here and maybe we can even focus in on it. My checklist would have one and a half pounds of ground beef or ground round and I added the half pound of sausage. Two 15 ounce cans of crushed tomatoes. I used a large 35 ounce, so a little more than that. Two of the cans of diced tomatoes. Two cans of paste. I added my mushrooms, my onions, my water, my green pepper, my brown sugar, my basil, oregano, salt, the black pepper, my little specks of red pepper, the garlic cloves, the beef bouillon, I'll add parsley later, and my bay leaves are in place. All right, all that's left to do is put the lid on, set it on low heat, and let it go. It will cook. The recipe calls for it to cook on low heat 8 to 10 hours. I have never ever cooked it that long. If I cook it for 6 hours, that seems plenty of time. And I do tend to cook it on low heat, and I break the cardinal crock pot rule. About 3 hours into it, I'm going to stir it through and add the parsley, then put the lid on. Sometimes it gets real juicy and I see a lot of liquid on the top and I'll take the lid off and stir it down again to help it stay blended. So enjoy! It's a great spaghetti sauce re recipe and it really is an easy one. Thanks for watching!